There's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Before I could install the repaired speaker, I had to also repair its wiring. I began by creating a color scheme to identify each of the four wires coming from the speaker. Orange and green for the output transformer wires, and black and red for the field coil wires. Once I soldered the new wires to the speaker, I installed it back in the chassis, and completed the wiring. Here you can see the newly repaired speaker securely in place. The converter, IF, and detector tubes all have grid caps for the signal input. Two of the three grid cap wires were frayed, so I replaced them. For the wire that was still in good shape, I removed a piece of insulation from the new wiring I was using and slipped it over the old wire to protect it. I then cleaned and polished the grid cap clips to ensure they'd not only look good, but would provide a solid electrical connection. Here you can see I've repaired the grid wires, and the polished grid caps are securely soldered in place. After weeks of work, the time had come to power up the radio and see if I had returned it to working condition. For safety's sake, I plugged the radio into my dim bulb current limiter and Variac isolation transformer. To learn more about these safety devices, please see my earlier video in this series on antique radio safety. Just as a quick review though, remember that the Variac allows the voltage to be turned up slowly, the isolation transformer helps protect from ground shocks, and the dim bulb current limiter absorbs excess current in the event of a short, all while giving a helpful visual indication of what's going on with the load. Everything went almost perfectly, and upon first power up, the radio appeared to be functioning just fine. Here you can hear it picking up the AM signal coming from a mini transmitter that's receiving an FM station. If only we could get a hot bowl at the tour tonight. No, it's uh, the omnipotent Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. Oh, you know what we should call if we can get a fake Chinese artificially... Radio reception is poor in my basement workshop, so this gives me a quick, easy way to see if a radio can pick up a signal. My plan was to now align the radio to peak its performance, but I noticed that the dial light had blown, and after I replaced it, it quickly blew again. The problem needed to be addressed. As you'll recall, I had replaced the dangerous resistance cord with a modern diode and resistor. The setup was working, but was allowing too much current to flow through the bulb upon startup. When an All-American 5 radio was first powered on, a large amount of current rushes through the bulb and tube filaments until the tubes heat up and start to conduct. The blowing bulb was an indication that this initial current was too high and would probably cause the tube filaments to also burn out prematurely. I could have added another resistor to reduce the current upon startup, but that resistor would continue to reduce current once the tubes had warmed up and performance would suffer. If only there was a magic way to limit the current upon startup and then return it to normal after a short while. You know where this is going. A thermistor or in-rush current limiter does just that. When it's cold, it reduces current flow, and when it warms up, current flow returns to normal. I chose a CL90 thermistor for our radio. As you can see here, it looks a lot like a ceramic capacitor, except it's black. And of course, unlike a capacitor, it behaves more like a variable resistor. At room temperature, a CL90 provides 120 ohms of resistance at 120 volts and can handle a maximum of one amp, more than enough for our radio. As it heats up though, resistance decreases dramatically to a negligible 1.18 ohms. It may not be magic, but it sure was a perfect solution to our problem. As you can see in my notes, I decided the best place to install the thermistor was between the hot lead coming from the fuse holder into the power switch. Here you can see I've attached one end of the thermistor to the fuse socket, and here it is installed in place connected to the switch. The thermistor did its job and fixed the blowing bulb problem, so I could now move on to aligning the radio. We'll do that in the next video, so please be sure to join me. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.